Hi, um, today we're going to do the last couple of bits from this um, page. Um, as you can see I still I haven't done all the rest and filled in the details yet. But we're just going to do um, these two. So we're going to start with the balloon. So I'm going to zoom in. Woo! There we go. Now what I'm going to actually start with with the balloon is the cloud because I've decided already, I've been looking at this for a while, um, thinking about it, that I want the cloud to be pink. So I've grabbed my number 20. I want it to look a bit sort of candy flossy and, and fun. So I'm just doing the bottom in a little scumbly pink, really gentle, and I'm going to fade it even more towards the top of the cloud which I want to look almost white. I just think it'd be fun to have this sort of pink cloud. Now I'm aware that this is the last video, so I need to show you a bit of what I'm planning on doing for the background as well. So I will do that later. Now we have the basket and I'm going to go for a traditional sort of brownie colour for the basket. So I'm going to grab my 76 and just colour that in. I'm using quite a gentle um, pressure to start with because I don't want it really dark. And I'm just going to shade it a little bit around here to put a little bit of shadow in there. And these bits I'm also going to do in this colour, but these will be darker. I don't know whether those will be string, really, not um, not sort of wood or whatever cord, but I'm just going to do that like that so it all matches. Now the actual balloon, we need to think about the fact that the light might be hitting it in the middle. That's my sort of idea, that be hitting it straight in the middle. So I'm going to do it so that we have a lighter colour in the centre and I'm going to do a sort of mix of colours. So I'm going to start with red. Hmm, got quite a lot of red. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Number 29 and this bottom piece is going to be red. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll start with a light layer of red across the whole of this bottom area. And then, uh, and then she has quite a lot of balloons in this book. Um, some sort of normal balloony type balloons and then hot air balloons. So you can use this technique for all of them. So darker here and then lighter as you get towards the centre. Now colour wise you can choose, uh, you could do it all in one colour and just not colour in Johanna's um, patterning. You could do um, pastels, primaries, um, big mix of colour, uh, just a couple of colours, three colours, you know there's lots and lots of options and each will give its own different individual effect. I'm just fiddling around with this until I think it's giving me the line down the centre that I'm looking for and I think that's pretty much there. Now I'm going to do a mix of colours here so I'm going to grab um, a green next I'm going to go for a sort of mid-green, as it were. Number 52, I think, is a sort of central green. And I'm going to ignore the dotted line and do this section. So I'm going to start off hard here. And then reduce the pressure on the pencil. So I go towards the centre so it's lighter. Do the same here. So this is a different technique to what I used below to get the same result. So you can have a think about whether you think this would work better for you compared to what we did at the bottom. So you can either do a light layer and then build the layers up or you can actually start dark and go to light. It's really up to you. Okay, my next one's going to be a yellowy goldy colour. I'm going to go for 60. Like this colour and we're just going to do this thin stripe so again darker here lighter towards the middle it's easier with a small thin stripe I find and it does take practice so don't expect to get it perfect right away I think it's calling for some blue but mm, purple I'm gonna go for purple next 
we're just gonna this is gonna be a rainbow balloon but without being a rainbow order so number six is our purple so it's going down quite hard and you can see I'm already starting to reduce the pressure now remember that you can if you find it goes down too hard where you need it lighter you can rub it out a little bit if um, if it's not dark enough you can go back over it so it's probably better to be more cautious and light to start with and then go back over it like I just have here rather than pushing too hard trying to erase it which doesn't always look that good um, orange next I reckon number four now this is a slightly more complex um, pattern to be able to um, get the effect but we should still be able to do it you see I'm just pressing lighter and I'm going to start getting harder again this square and then really hard in that one you see it's still there next one I'm going to get a blue now we've done too much without blue can I go for number three we'll just do this very thin line of blue here so I'm not really thinking about whether these colours are going to match or not I'm just going for it sometimes I think I spend too long deciding on colours and it stops me from colouring right there's a number 61 a sort of dark pinky colour See, I put a lot of layers here, reducing the layers. I need to check the time. Just thought, oh yeah, I've just realised it's got really late. Okay, um, next little bit, um, I'm thinking, hmm, what have we got? We've got a lilac, no. Blue, green, green, yellow. I'm going to go for this brown, this um, number 73. There we go. Now this top section, maybe a lighter pink. No, that's the cloud. We can't do that. A light blue. Number 30. I think it looks rather like an Easter egg. I'm saying that because it's Easter, it's Good Friday today. Because I'm recording these in advance. And the last top colour. I think uh, uh, a yellowy colour. Yeah, let's go for number one. I'm not. I'm going to ignore the stripe on the top. There he is, and we've got our little um, buoyancy balloons, whatever they are, there. And I am going to do those in this green colour, number fifty. Right, I'm going to stop there and just um, note down my colours like I've been doing for this section and then we're going to do this um, next picture, so bear with me. Right, back to do this building here. Now I'm not really sure what to do with this one. So I'm going to start with the stars. And uh, as tempting as it is to do with them with metallic pen, I want them to be different to the outside. So I'm going to grab number 16 and do them. I like this uh, yellowy colour. Now the domes of these buildings I could do in a gold, but I have already done a gold dome um, video for you and um, I've already done a picture with gold domes in as well in the book, so I'm going to do something different. And I'm thinking maybe a sort of coppery greeny type colour might work. 
not sure if I've got that colour though. I think I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to use number 57 and uh, start here. So I'm going to do a darker amount of colour on the edge and then less towards the centre and just build up the layers so that it looks like it's slightly shiny. When I look in the camera this colour doesn't look that nice but it doesn't look coppery green at all. That's more of a turquoisey colour, isn't it? But uh, I'm going to do all the roofs this colour. I'm actually going to um, make the buildings look quite similar to each other. I think it adds some consistency to the picture. So I'm doing the same technique for each of these domes. I think this will work. It'll We've got a green tree ne next to it, but uh, by the time we've um, done the buildings below, which won't be green, it'll uh, work, I think. So all the same. Oh, I've put the oven on. I don't know if you can hear it in the background while I was um, writing down my numbers. My son couldn't eat all his food last night. We had a takeaway. And... Uh, so um, I'm warming it back up for his lunch because he popped it in the fridge. I can smell it starting to cook already. It's making me feel a bit hungry. I didn't have much breakfast. I didn't have much of an appetite because I'd eaten too much. So uh, it's, uh, I will want some lunch, definitely. It, this is number five and I'm going to use it for these sorts of bits. Um, what I'm going to do is do a harder amount here and lighter towards the centre. It's easiest to see on this one. I'll show you. So hard and start to fade and then start hard at this end and then start to fade. And it matches in with the shine on the domes then. And I'm going to do all the little detaily bits in this colour. I think it works well under the domes and they've all got a line under them. But the main buildings aren't going to be green and it will just act as a sort of transitional colour. Um, I think that bit, I think this bit, and definitely this bit. Oh, it smells good. You can't smell it. Mm, some fish and chips, by the way, if you're wondering. I'm also gonna use this for these top bits. Trying to use the same technique, it's very tricky when it's such a small space. So he's got nearly a whole piece of fish and about a quarter of his chips left. Mmm, yum. Now the buildings, I'm going to do brown. Um, I'm sure there's some sort of, there are some, they are based on some sort of traditional building which probably isn't, has its own colour, but this is, I'm just doing it my way. So number 49, this is going to be the main parts of the building and we're going to have a slightly darker colour for some of the other parts. So I'm doing the same method again so um, it's easy with this to do a light layer and then a darker part on the outside and just make it lighter in the centre. I'm doing that because I want them to look a little bit rounded as well. I think these buildings look like they would be rounded. Now these bits here are going to have a different colour. So I'm just going to leave those. And they're going to be, the windows and doors are just going to look like openings, I feel. I don't know whether they're going to need a colour inside them or not. Let's see how it looks when we're done. So I'm hoping that this will give them some sort of a slightly cylindrical look to them. So uh, going through. Now this one's trickier because I'm trying to guess where the wall ends, but actually I can use the um that's the end. So the middle the window is in the middle. So I start can start getting a little bit darker again just there. It's a bit dark. Anyway, 
to be okay. There's not a huge gradation of colour because I don't know if gradation is the right word, I don't think so. Anyway, because um, this colour is quite light, it's quite difficult to do that. But uh, hopefully it will be enough just to give the impression that, uh, that they're slightly rounded and they're catching the light in the middle. I shall have a look in the camera in a minute and see whether it has worked. Hmm, not too bad is it? I think it has. This one needs a bit more work. Now the windows, where they're cut out, I'm going to use this, sorry, number 73. I'm just going to grab a random pencil and not tell you what it is. That's really useful, isn't it? There we go. And then this one, look, and this one, and this one, and the door. Those top windows don't have it. So it sort of gives the impression of a little doorway. Now I am very tempted to leave it like that. I'm not going to actually, I'm going to do anything in the windows. I'm going to leave them white because I feel like it's the sort of building where there would just be a gap. I don't know why, just in my head. Now, I said I would show you my background, so we're going to do that. Now I need a blue. Now, I've used lots of blues in here already. But there's one blue that I think I haven't used. And so that's the blue I'm going to pick. And it's this one. I think I've used it once and I'm trying to remember where and I can't, but never mind. Number 35. Now this is a slightly greeny blue. It doesn't look that. And so I think it will work for sky and for sea and for everything. And what I'm going to do, I'll show you. So I'm just going to put a layer here and then I'm going to fade it towards the centre and I'm going to do that all the way around the edge of each of the pictures I'm going to do this with every one it will take me some time and I'm not going to take it all the way to the picture in the centre I'm going to leave a little white halo around it. It's going to go around that star, I think. I shall see how it looks. So it's just going to be almost a little nod to a background rather than being a proper one. Now you could use um, a pastel for this, pastel background, you could use um, a softer pencil that's a bit easier to, to um, blend, um, Holbein's might be better, Prismacolor, something like that, because these Ergosofts, you can't see, yeah. there, these Ergosofts are quite hard, so you could try something else. You also might want to do ground underneath some of the things rather than this sort of colour. It's up to you. But this was, I was, as I said, I was going to do a rainbow colour, but I think it would have looked too random. And take it almost to the edge of the building here, I think, and here. See, almost there, almost touching. And here. I don't want too much of the white showing. There we go. I like that. I think that works and that's going to happen on all of them. But uh, 
not right now so there we go so i hope that was useful i hope you enjoyed it um don't forget to um subscribe to my channel if you want to get notifications when my next videos come out um i am planning on doing lots more from this book because i absolutely adore it but there will be some from other books as well because i realize not everyone has got this book and not everyone is as absolutely besotted with it as me but uh, that's that's me thank you for watching and happy coloring <laughs>